Evan Agriculture, Western Cape Adjustments Appropriation Bill. Thank you. Good afternoon. I see the Honourable the Minister, Minister Windy. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Calm down. Uh, speaker, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, we are tabling this adjustment budget during an exciting time for the Western Cape's agricultural sector. Uh, speaker, two and a half years ago when I got agriculture added to my other portfolio of economic development and tourism, bringing the whole of the economy together in the region, I, uh, it was just post the uh, uh, mining in Darba that took place in this region where the world came together to talk about uh, mining, uh, but they came to Cape Town to talk about mining. And I thought, why don't we all bring, why don't we bring African agriculture together to talk about agriculture uh, in Africa, why don't we do exactly the same thing? Why don't we have an agri in Darba, an African agri in Darba? Let's talk about policy. Let's talk about the ecosystem. Let's talk about trade within Africa. Let's talk about food security 50 years and beyond. And, uh, Speaker, I am really, really pleased, glad today to be standing here to say to you that Africa's largest agricultural gathering, the African uh, agri investment in Darba, is currently taking place in Cape Town. Uh, it started yesterday and uh, carries on today. And, uh, Speaker, the continent's leading investors, agribusinesses, senior government officials, and industry experts are in our region to discuss how we can expand agriculture in Africa to become the world's food basket. In addition to boosting production, we envisage an agricultural sector in our continent which is owned by its people, which drives inclusive growth, where we are committed to building a sector where hard-working individuals have the freedom to access opportunities to improve their circumstances, a sector in which all people, regardless of rank, are treated fairly. And Speaker, on that point, I would like to really thank my department uh, for helping the organizers uh, uh, come together with this uh, conference. I want to thank the other uh, uh, sponsors and funders to make this uh, conference a reality. I also would like to take this opportunity to thank Minister Zokwana for uh, helping us with this conference and opening it yesterday. To to, Minister, uh, uh, to Mr. Nan Nanta Nene, who also came to the, the conference yesterday to speak, to fellow MECs from Gauteng, who came along to speak at this conference, because this conference is not about the Western Cape, it's not about South Africa, this conference is about Africa. And uh, I want to thank all of those partners who came together to make this a reality. Speaker, here in the Western Cape, we are seeking to add up to 100,000 agri-processing jobs to the economy under the banner of Project Kulisa. These jobs will largely be created in our rural areas. With this mid-term allocation, we are providing an additional amount uh, in excess of 25 million rand for drought relief. These funds will assist emerging grain farmers in the West Coast specifically, and uh, at the onset of drought, many of those farmers who are important employers in their communities face an uncertain future. As yields failed to materialize, it became clear that many would struggle to cover the costs of operations. The Western Cape Department of Agriculture, through its commitment to supporting land reform, had already placed significant investment in these black farmers. We are determined to walk the road with them to ensure that their enterprises grow into thriving agribusinesses. This allocation brings to 61 million the total amount the Western Cape government has committed to drought relief in the past year. It includes an 11 million, million rand reallocation from the Comprehensive Agricultural Support Program. Speaker, my office received a letter from the National Department of Agriculture and Forestry and Fisheries advising that the Western Cape has been allocated 12 million rand for drought relief from the national government. These funds are to be distributed directly to the beneficiaries, and I would like to urge the national government to ensure that this money is dispensed as a matter of urgency. Every day is a, another step closer to a farm operation being forced to shut its doors as a result of government red tape. We cannot afford to drag our feet on getting this support to the farmers who need it most. Uh, and of course, it does concern me, Speaker, that uh, the province is not integral in, in the allocation of this uh, 12 million rand, 
but we uh, do trust that the national department will allocate it correctly and make sure that it, uh, as I said, is done speedily. Uh, speaker, as part of our drought relief funding, we, will, uh, uh, we also put money towards Smart Agri, the climate change response strategy we developed in partnership with the industry and academia. Uh, to achieve future growth, we have, we have to protect the sector against the impact of extreme weather events. And there's no doubt it is going to get worse over the next medium term. Smart Agri is the result of two years of extensive collaboration between the Western Cape government, specifically the Departments of Agriculture and Environmental Affairs and Development Planning, and the University of Cape Town's African Climate and Development Initiative, and a wide range of stakeholders in the private sector. One of Smart Agri's priorities is conservation agriculture, which advocates a minimum tillage year-round soil coverage and crop rotation uh, uh, process of farming. Due in part to the conservation agriculture, farmers in the Swatland have seen good yields in wheat crops despite the challenging year or low rainfall. Uh, with the introduction of uh, no-till seeding methods combined with crop rotation practices uh, that we have pioneered through the long-term crop rotation trial at Langevents, our research farm in the Swatland, we are currently producing nearly double the amount of wheat on less, on less than half the area previously planted and, of course, that's also with just about less than half the rainfall. And, uh, Speaker, I'm happy to report that uh, at last measurement, uh, almost 98% of all of agricultural farming uh, in the Swatland area are now implementing this process that's been developed through the research. As we make progress in mitigating the impact of the drought on the agricultural sector, we are going forward with our plans to open markets for the Western Cape produce. Under Project Kulisa, Speaker, we are seeking to boost the number of exports to key markets and to ensure that our produce can be internationally accredited for export. We are constructing a residue testing facility, and for that, six million has been allocated to the development of this facility. And as you know, we already allocated, but with the RAND uh, uh, dollar exchange rate, uh, we've had to put this extra six million into this process. And this is to allow opening up of access to markets. But already on the back of Colisa, we have seen uh, companies like Excellent Meats, uh, looking at the, at the halal sector specifically, 250 tons worth of exports per month uh, coming from their uh, factory in Athlone. We've seen Distel moving further into international markets. We've seen exactly the same thing from Cape Span, and of course, AgriProtein looking at feeding of, uh, of uh, animals specifically uh, from poultry, uh, to other animals in the, in the agri-sector, we've seen uh, w really world cutting-edge technology development in this space, and they're also increasing their footprint across the world. And so far, uh, we have seen 50% now of South Africa's total exports in the processed goods coming from the Western Cape alone, in excess of 50 billion rands worth of export. And uh, we have made ex uh, excellent uh, progress in, uh, in growing agriculture, and, uh, Speaker, we also aim to continue in this vein. Uh, we need to do a lot more. And with those uh, points, I would like to uh, thank, first of all, the HOD uh, and her team for uh, bringing us to this space, for the dedication in which they put into this space. Uh, but then also, of course, every, sing every single person involved in our specific plans, whether it be Colisa uh, and uh, within government, and then, of course, not forgetting every single person involved in the agricultural space and the agri-value chain across this province. I really, really thank them for that. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. I see the Honourable Schaefer. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Speaker, yesterday I touched on the three challenges at Life Front and Centre for this agricultural department. And we know that, if the, as we said, uh, effective land reform by national government is failing across the country and that drought and water challenges will continue to put food security at risk. And, Speaker, we speak so much about drought, but we don't, I think we underestimate the real impact that drought is having not only on this province but on this country. So the Western Cape Department of Agriculture has to date, since the start of drought, as the Minister has indicated, spent 61 order, million order, please, to members. assist farmers and agri-workers. This Schaefer, department... If, if you could take your seat, please. Are your eyes going to point of order? Uh, Minister, uh, Honourable Dianke, 
the procedure is to first ask if the member would take a question, not to just pose your question. So uh, I will overlook it this time. You may proceed, Honourable Yeah, I do, I do think he so. He is Speaker, indeed for the, the deputy whip and yes. Thank you. So, um, I, once again, I'm reiterating that this department is the leading department that focuses on the plight of farmers affected by adverse weather conditions and drought. And it should be noted that the Western Cape can only provide support, financial support, to livestock farmers with a maximum of 50 large stock units per farmer. That's only one third of their total number of animals. The disaster drought framework only allows livestock and not crop farmers to be assisted, Speaker. But, must I, but must, what I must add is that the funding currently available is only approximately 50% of the amount required to provide all our farmers. That's 564 emerging and 218 commercial with fodder for one month. And Speaker, the delayed funds from national government of 12 million will also go to drought relief and top on the resources already given by this government's own budget. 12 million, Speaker, is only 2.4% of the 500 million of the total amount of national government has given to drought relief. And Speaker, it is so disingenuous when the ANC criticizes the fact that this department did not spend its measly 12 million it afforded to our drought-stricken areas as it arrived. Why? because the support from the disaster declaration by the Western Cape Cabinet was approved in 25th November 2015, that's a year ago, and sent to National Disaster Management Center, who only responded in January 2016 by classifying the West Coast and the Central Coast districts, as well as local municipalities of Witzenburg, Prince Albert and Oetzeren as disaster areas. And secondly, Speaker, the Western Cape Order. in November 2015 estimated for assistance based on the estimated number of animals that need to be supported for a period of only five months, and the price of fodder was then 63 million. And in January 2016, the re-estimate was updated due to the large increase in fodder prices at that stage, and then estimated 88 million. Just note that you only gave 12. And then during May, as DAF had requested, the estimated cost came slightly down to 59.3 million, but it doesn't equate to the 12 million you gave us. So how much did we get? Well, DAF authorized the reallocation of some of the cost grant and aimed at support to support the emerging farmers towards drought relief for, emerging, for our emerging farmers. So the department managed to reallocate about 12 million, 6 million in the, um, in the 2015 16 and about 5.5 million in 2016 17. And, Speaker, just with regards to the developing farmers, to date the full cost reallocation of 11.463 million were utilized to provide fodder to developing farmers since March 2016. An amount of 6 million has also been utilized to pay for inputs for our emerging grain farmers who lost their crop last year due to the trout. Another 1.5 million has been paid for this last uh, year to provide a monthly livelihood support to the emerging grain farmers and their agri-workers. And I really commend the department for taking initiative, moving money around to do that, because we can't afford for emerging farmers to actually become unsuccessful at this stage. Speaker, a changing climate, a rising input costs and an increased competition for water is challenging South Africa producers to attain higher yields with much less water. We welcome the fact that the Fruit Loop Project has received an essential 6.4 million in essential funds. And as the Minister explained, the Fruit Loop is an open access online platform that monitors vineyards and orchards, builds on satellite imagery and weather information. The researching and implementation of smart agri-tools, as he said, to ensure more effective conservation farmers is welcomed and supported. We welcome these tools, such as the Cape Agricultural Mobile Information System, the CAMIS, the cell phone version of the Cape Farm Mapper, a spatial decision-making smart app. These are very important in order to move forward with um, adverse weather conditions. Recently, a portal called Green Agri was also launched by the Western Cape Department on agri um, of Agriculture and Green Cape. And this includes smart agri-production plans and sustainable farming practices balancing farming and conservation needs, resource efficiency, and waste minimization. 
Speaker, we welcome the 3.4 million allocated for veterinary services um, towards the ITEC system, and we as still as a committee raise the concerns around the shortage of, veterans, of vets in our province. Um, speaker, I commend the agri-processing focus of Project Kalisa. We've seen that in 2015, China became South Africa's sixth largest export market for packaging wines by volume and the largest in the Asian region. China customs stats also revealed that South Africa doubled its market share from 2 to 4 percent in volume terms and in China for the first half of 2015. Uh, speaker, we encourage uh, to the, the minister to look at something quite different and to look at the international best practice monitoring and auditing systems for farm worker conditions on our farms. Farmers being audited by each and every major importer and these audits should be streamlined and the information should be shared through an established forum. This working together relationship will create more efficient and effective oversight of complaints around the working conditions of farm workers. These international best practices should be extended into all the commodities of the agricultural sector. A proactive approach to ensuring that agriculture continues to live on its potential minister is more effective and so that unfortunate labor conflicts such as the Robertson Winery can be avoided. And Speaker, I want to ask the minister and his department to also continue to invest in economic opportunities for our fishing communities along our 12 small boat harbors. We need to continue to create alternative opportunities for fishermen who are losing their livelihoods because DAF fails to allocate fishing quotas to our local fishing communities. But more importantly, DAF has failed dismally to act as the effective implementing arm to curb abalone poaching, which is robbing our people and the Western Cape's ocean economy of opportunity for jobs and growth. And finally, as chair of the standing committee, I'd like to thank the minister and his department for the immense work they do for this valuable sector of the Western Cape province. I must commend the department, which for the third time in four years have been rated, has rated their annual report in the province, including first in the country as being the most consistent department in the country as assessed by SIGA. To my committee members who together focus on ensuring that the agricultural sector continues to be a thriving and transforming space, I thank you. And finally, to my committee coordinator, Zayda Adams, thank you for your hard work and support. Speaker, the DA supports this adjustment budget for vote 11, the Department of Agriculture. Thank you. Thank you. I see the Honorable Member Davids. Thank you, Speaker. This adjustment budget for agriculture looks like funny bookkeeping. And now they're going to ask me the question, they're going to say, the MEC is going to say, yeah, the ANC don't know what they're talking about. But if you look into the adjustment budget book, you will, say, you will see, Speaker, that all over money is being served from um, slower filing of posts, the savings, then they serve the money. The money are saved to good and service, uh, served to good and um, Good and services, and then you and then you have uh, uh, savings. You have a lot of savings, uh, speaker, on um, compensation of employees. If you listen to the AG when he came here, he said to us, "That is classified as a risk because there's a lot of uh, um, savings on this compensation of employees." When you speak to the the department, they will say no but they don't get, they want to recruit people in those positions, but they don't get the correct people. And now, Speaker, I'm two years in this portfolio and it's going on for two years. There's, there's no, no one in South Africa that they can recruit to come and work in this department on certain positions. There, is, there are so many entries. It is not clear in this department's adjustment budget that they know budgetary processes and budgetary practices because they are taking money they are taking money from this side to that side but it's all things that you need to budget it beforehand like posts when you you when you advertise a post you need to in your organogram if the post is there you need to budget for that post but in this department you you see money being served to another side because there is a, a, a unforeseen post that they need to fold. So I don't understand that, uh, 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 Speaker. Order, please, and, um, We see an overall increase of 28 million, 
of this sustainable resource mani management account for a massive 24 million. We also see that 10 million become available to the province. Of this, 7.5 million is directly for food security and drought. Well, we welcome this uh, speaker because drought is a serious issue within our province. But really, speaker, I think that when we say that National is only giving 12 million, <coughs> We are, we are saying that what is, what is the department doing of building a relationship with National to see, to see through that they get the funds they needed for the drought in this province? Because you cannot come and say National is not giving money while National is giving money to this department, but this department wants it on, in February and National is saying we are giving it you in June. But where is the communication between the two, depart between the two uh, departments? A slash of funds. Yes. There's no such thing. Much Order, more than the. Uh, that is much more than what the finance MEC earlier mentioned about drought relief provision, which, which all the shifting around of various amounts, the 20 million that goes to public co co cooperative and private entities is not fully explained because it was explained in our committee, but they said just look to the book we gave you explanation there, but it's not in detailed explanation. What, why are they doing that? Another strange ent entry is one of the 15 million for machinery and equipment. Surely this could have been taken care of in the main appropriate preparation of budget. That also goes for the 6 million that will be used to upgrade a, a laboratory to international specifications. Surely that needs, for, that needs also arise before mid-year. There's also a big noise made about the additional income about one million rand. We asked the HOD about the one million rand. She said it's, uh, uh, the one million rand was of the installations of the prepaid that the department did for saving of electricity, but they also be it become an income to them. They made an income of one million rand with the prepaid electricity meters. I don't know if, if, if that is the, uh, a function of this department to make an income with e prepaid electricity. So that was also a question that we've asked in the standing committee. If this department now in, is into the resale of electricity, like a municipality, because that is a function of the municipality to sell prepaid electricity. There's also numerous entities of savings and a long list of various donations from the Farmers Union, Agri Western Cape to state agency Westgro. Even a local agricultural society in Prince Albert is mentioned. Is the paid to secure opportunity for the MEC? The department will do much better to better plan, estimate, and control its budget because that was one of the, the, the issues came from the AG that the department must uh, better do better estimates and control in its budget because previously there was uh, they an estimation that was wrong and then they said it was a mistake and they corrected it that to rely heavily on late shifts in the guise of the adjustment budget process. The adjustment budget cannot be treated as a tool to balance the books and hide possible embarrassment later. In some cases, it's clear the department put off too much to chew and now tries to make good by swifting moving funds around. We saw the agricultural MEC encouraging visitors to drink wine instead of water, as there is a drought in the province. It, it made various headlines in newspapers today. This is ironic, and it comes from an MEC of the DA run Western Cape government that prophesied to have a game changer called alcohol harms reduction. In a province where too many farm workers and rural people still suffer the consequences of the former repressive, repressive thought system where people were remunerated with cheap wine, the top system. The Premier spoke earlier this morning about the alcohol syndrome children. It's because of the top system that we have the children today. And now the MEC go publicly and saying, you don't need to drink water, drink wine because of the drought. Shame on you. Shame on you, MEC. That is, that, uh, you, you cannot make a joke. You cannot make a joke out of the ills 
in our society. We are, we are here, we must assist our society to become a better society. We cannot say, go and drink wine because there's no water. The government must put its money where its mouth is and be seen to lead in the fight to reduce alcohol harms and not encourage more drinking of alcohol beverages that in fact harm mostly poor people. It's not a joke at all. Because we've Honorable seen in the... David, if I may ask, can you address the chair, please? Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Chairman. Because we've seen the documentary of John, uh, Tom Heinemann that is in overseas now. He's, then that documentary, it was said that in the Western Cape, specifically, farm workers is slaves. And they are slaves because of this was one of the things that was identified, the top system. They are slaves because our chairperson spoke now about the living conditions on the farm workers. We spoke for two years in the house about the living conditions of farm workers in the Western Cape, and we were not listened to. But now because it's an international thing, the documentaries that run overseas, now everyone is jumping on the wagon of living conditions of farm workers in the Western Cape. MEC, we must put our money where our mouth is. The farm workers in the Western Cape need us because at the end of the day, it's them that is giving us the production. It's not technology. It's not research that is giving us the production. It's the farm workers that stands up 2 o'clock in the morning and go to bed at 8 at night that is giving us the production. I thank you. Thank you, Member David. I see the Honourable Christians. Thank, thank you, Speaker. F um, agriculture is important to the Western Cape and South Africa, and also to Africa. And, uh, 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 Speaker, the important thing is that the ACTP welcomes the money that goes to the drought relief. That is what we need. Order, but, please, members. But, Speaker, the important thing is that uh, Member um, Salon David spoke about farm workers. I, I'm glad to see that farm workers becomes farm owners. And I know that the department is busy with that. And that is what we must see. What that is when our people are liberated, when, when they are given the over land and they are equipped to follow on. So I, so, 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 so speaker, speaker, the important thing is, I, I, I just want to repeat what I said this morning. I don't think the ANC understands that this is the place where we come and the department, the ministers come and say, listen, we want to shift some funds. We want to adjust this budget. That's why we have this debate. And, and, and they have not given any reason why votes. And you, know, and you know, Speaker, we sat in committees. I don't sit in committees, but we sit in committees. We debate these things, and we can influence committees. But, but uh, uh, Speaker, we, we, we support this vote. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Christians. In the... Honourable Dagmore, it's a participatory exercise. And in the absence of the EFF, I now see the Minister, Minister Wendy. Thank you very much, Speaker, and thank you very much to the members who participated in this debate. Uh, first of all, to the Chairperson of the Committee, Honourable Schaefer, thank you very much for your uh, input. Uh, you did focus a lot on the drought, as, as others did. Um, and of course, uh, this is the big issue that's facing us all. Um, I mean, I spoke about it when I, when I spoke. Uh, I did notice that while you were speaking, that the Honorable Whip on the other side of the House kept on saying, what are you doing with question marks all the time? And that is exactly the question that should be asked of the ANC, is what are you doing other than just talk? So far for the drought from a national government point of view in this province, it's zero. Only what we've received is a letter to say we will allocate 12 million to the drought. One year Order, later, please. what we have done, and I will tell you. Minister Wendy, six, please speak to the chair. 61 Thank you. million rand is what we've done already. The best performance in South Africa on mitigation of drought. The best performance. So he can keep asking, what are you doing? He must open his ears and listen. But I think he doesn't want to listen because he's too embarrassed that his own political party is doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. This is a knee-jerk reaction because they are failing. They are failing, Speaker. They are failing the real people who are feeling the pain of this drought. And uh, perhaps further to that, uh, the, the Honourable Member spoke about farm worker audits. And I think that's a good idea. 
Um, we need to have these audits, but perhaps what I can also do is mention, uh, if the Honorable Fritz would allow me, uh, we will probably go public with it uh, with a lot more detail, but uh, only this morning did uh, the Honorable Member, uh, Minister Fritz and myself and our two departments meet, because we as agriculture have a process of doing farm worker uh, uh, audits ourselves. We visit every single farm worker household across the province, and uh, we've been doing this now for two years, which gives us really good data. But the question is, are we bringing this data together? Are we linking it with the Department of Education? Because what it's telling us is how many kids are, are dropping out of school, etc., etc. We need to fix those, that, that structure. But at the same time, this, that we have social workers on these farms. Are we feeding that information back? Because I agree with every member in this house. We need to make sure that where the problems lie, specifically on the most vulnerable people of our province, that we put systems in place to identify these problems. And there I agree with the Honourable Davids. We don't need a journalist from another country coming to tell us where these problems are. We need to actually find early warning mechanisms of putting them on the table. But I'll get to the Honourable Davids shortly. With regard, with regard to the small boat harbours, um, I also agree. Uh, absolutely. And uh, that links to the harbours themselves, it links to the poaching, it links to the allocation, as you say, of the, of the uh, quotas. Uh, it is a real rig, big issue. And the problem with, we've got a full operation in South Africa of how we develop the coastal economy. But quite frankly, I'm not seeing the action that I think we should be seeing out of Project Pakisa. And I think, if I think, uh, I will, if I think, and I want to put on the table the difference between Kulisa and Pakisa, Kulisa has got projects and they report back on a six weekly basis with a dashboard. Pakisa is supposed to be doing exactly the same thing. It's run by the president, and it's supposed to be doing exactly the same thing. And you know what? Those dashboards oh, are online. You can go on your phone right now and have a look at those dashboards. Everything's got a red light on it. Why? Because the president is so busy with all of his other nonsense that he's not doing his job and actually following up on the programs of projects. And that's why we are failing again, the people of our province, the most vulnerable, in this process because the president is somewhere else in actual fact he's trying to keep himself out of jail as we hear at the moment that's his biggest worry that is the truth and it is a very very painful now to the honorable davids she starts off by saying funny bookkeeping and then she mentions the adjustments appropriation adjustments and i don't know if we need to have a separate workshop or if the minister of finance was run special programs for the anc here adjustments are where you correct for the unseen or foreseen because you make your budgets a year in advance even in actual factor more than a year in advance and of course it's very difficult to spot the unforeseen to plan for droughts i mean if we are correcting the books and adjusting for droughts and we do it we did it last year at this time, and we're doing it again this year at this time. We still haven't got the national government's adjustment in the drought supporting. It has not happened. And, and you see, now she says the, lab, the, the Order, laboratory. Order, please. She obviously didn't listen at all in the, in the standing committee where the appropriation for the laboratory is the increase in the rand dollar exchange rate of providing this facility so that we can get better access to market speaker. The rand dollar exchange rate is just an excuse from the ANC. That's all that they see. When in actual fact, the real reason for that amount of money having to be found somewhere else for this project is because, again, the failure of that side of the House's president to operate an effective, efficient government that Honorable gives us Davis. an economy that we can work with. Templi it's a failing economy because of how the ANC are trying to run this, this country. They are running it into the ground. 0% growth rate means that you're in big trouble as a country, and all you do is smile and laugh. It is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Then, of course, she comes up with her real clangor. Order, please, members. Too much noise. Her real clangor as the, as the opposition member to this vote, and she says, you must please build a better relationship with the National Department. 
you must please build a better relationship with the national department. And you don't have one. Now, I'm not sure if the honorable member knows or not, but I would very much like her to have a word with her DG or her minister or her deputy minister. There's a whole lot of them that she can go and talk to and ask them the relationship between the Western Cape and the national department. Ask them about the three months of this year that our government's HOD, Ms. Joeen Isaacs, spent three months at national to help the National Department of Agriculture get, their self, get themselves sorted out because their systems were all over the place. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And we must build a better relationship. We must build a better relationship, but yesterday I spent Order, the morning please. with Minister Zokwana. I think that the relationship is actually to be built within the ANC because it sounds like the whole of this ANC is in the Zuma camp. This is the Zuma camp sitting here in this province. Honorable <laughs> Madi Kazali, if I could call you to order. You are not in your seat and you are not at liberty to do what you have just done. Um, please be aware of your actions. Uh, if I should say, as Honorable Dagbo says, you need to behave better. Thank you. You may Thank proceed, you. Minister. Thank you, Speaker. The next point she ra raises is around prepaid meters and the nearly million rand that was brought in. So uh, we, we had to have a look at our energy efficiencies across the department. And uh, we entered into a program that had a look at where we were spending money on electricity, uh, what was happening, where the machines were left on at night, where we were wasting electricity. And we have a number of households at Elsenburg, a number of people that live on the Elsenburg property. A number of them that live on the property rightfully live there because they, uh, they work for Elsenburg, they work for the department, and it is part of the package that they receive when they get employment on the property. But there are a number of households on the property who are tenants. There are a number of them, and we're involved in a court case at the moment because they, for years, haven't paid, they haven't paid their rates and taxes. Um, but, of course, at the same time, there are people on the property who are receiving electricity every month, paid for by the apartment, and so that needed to be rectified. So prepaid meters were put in place so that the tenants on the property could pay for their share of the electricity that they use. And that is where the prepaid meters come from. That is where that income comes from, which is commendable that the system is now being fixed. And I want to thank those individuals that are paying their fair share. Those individuals who have been living there for 30 years, and those are the individuals that I want to see land transfer happening. I want those houses transferred to those, to those individuals, that they can actually have ownership of those properties. And we are busy working on that program. Then, of course, the Honorable Member spoke about the DOP system. And I want to just remind the Honorable Member that this is not the first time she's spoken about the DOP system. She's spoken about it, and she mentioned two years ago when she spoke about it, and I remember it very well. And I wrote her a letter the next day and said to her, you have made the following allegations in the House about the DOP system. Please furnish me with the detail because I would like to go to, go to the police station and lodge the accusation at the police station. That was two years ago. Do you know, Speaker, today I still don't have an answer. So she stands up here every time making these allegations, but there's no substance to back the allegations. So I will put that challenge to her again now publicly. Please, if you are too scared to lay the charge at the police station, give the information to me. I will personally go and lay the charge at the police station because what you are talking about is illegal. It is illegal. So let's, Order, please. let's ask her to please see if she can put her money where her mouth is this time. Minister, if you could finish up, please. Honourable And Davids. then uh, from the Honourable uh, Christians, thank you very much for your input. Um, you spoke about farm owners, and that's exactly what we need. We need owners of farms. But unfortunately, at the moment, the ANC policy is, and they are still buying up land in the province, second to none, still no leases, still no land ownership. Their policy is no land ownership for black farmers. Thank you, thank you Minister Windy. That, that concludes...